crazy. Uh, <laughs> on this episode, I'm letting you know right now, off top, there are a lot of spoilers, okay? Tons of spoilers for The Boys Season 2. Me and my homie Love, we, this episode is featuring my homie Love. We talk about Episode 7 specifically because Episode 7 was crazy. crazy. So we talk about Episode 7 and we're, we have a few fan theories on what Episode 8 might be. Which is the finale coming up this Friday. So, a lot of spoilers. So, if you haven't seen it, go see it. Then listen to this episode because this is a long... It's a long one, too. It's an hour or some change. We talked and joked on some things. So, it's a long episode. Spoilers. So, don't be DMing me like... I, I was waiting for them all to pile up. And then I was going to watch it. You spoiled it for me. You ruined it. I don't want to hear that at all. Okay? So, I'm giving you the warning. What was the warning sound now? You heard that? That's the warning. I'm letting you know. All right? So enjoy this episode. As always, I appreciate y'all for listening to this podcast. Now let's talk to my homie Love, who is a photographer, comedy writer, and he does a lot of other great things. All right? Let's talk to him. Yo. Yo. Love. Yo. What the hell, man? Yo. It's been Yo, what? A, it's been a hell of a season, dog. What? What? Uh, what a mind blowing episode. That episode seven pissed me off at the. I was like, "What the?" F-? Okay, well, first of all, I just, it's going to be really, spoilers. I really lost my head. Oh, about that. Okay, hold up. There's going to be spoilers. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, not too many. We're just doing theories on what eight might be. But we're going to talk about seven right now because we're both frustrated. And mm-hmm. <laughs> it's. it's... <laughs> all right, first of all, love, uh, what are your frustrations with uh, episode seven? Are we. Are we, we spoilers are fine now? Like, you, you already made the disclaimer? Yeah, I made mean, disclaimer. Spoilers are fine now. Because I'm, I'm going to make a disclaimer before no. before I even uh, intro okay. the episode. But we're, we're in the middle of it now. So <laughs> do what okay. you need to do. Right now, and then we'll do another how episode. The hell, how in the hell do you have this congressional hearing and the most important thing, and everyone's heads explode, and then a couple minutes later you find out that all the Republican Party has COVID? Like, what about it? <laughs> <laughs> It's spilling over into reality. <laughs> look, look, what kind of? Yo, super- and I mean, like, hmm? no, go ahead. What are you gonna say? Like, yeah, no, I mean, it is. It is like a really like they're going hard on like the political satire, not just like satire and the comedy, but like you know, just the political stuff with the um, you know with how Stormfront and Homelander. Are really radicalizing a lot of these intels. They showed that dude at the beginning. That uh, you know, that was a deep game. episode. I mean, I mean, that was a deep section. Yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. they really mm-hmm. set that up really nicely. Like I was watching this dude. I'm like, but they kept bombarding him with this thing of of scare tactics. This is happening. Mm-hmm. This is the terrorist. This is happening. Yeah. This is happening. And then it's just like it just got in his head, and he ended up just killing a random guy. And yep, it was like a random brown guy. A, a random brown guy. So it it, it had a yeah. it had a it had a the remnants of uh, Black Lives Matter. It had a remnants of uh, COVID nineteen. How everyone's like, oh, it's yeah. a hoax. It's not real. But you keep getting bombarded. Oh no, people are dying. The numbers, this that, and you just fucking react one day. And yeah, that was great. I I was like, wow, that is deep. For a, a, yeah, cr- no, a comic book a, movie, that was probably that was probably scarier than scenes with like Homelander in them, where you don't know if he'll snap in any second. Because the reason that was scary uh-huh. was like everybody knows somebody like that. Everybody is on Facebook, and they have someone in the comments that's like that. And yeah. you know, they, the way they showed this guy's story was so methodical, you know, monotonous every single day. He's seeing the same uh, Stormfront memes. He's developing this kind of attraction to Stormfront uh-huh. that's, you know, clouding his mind. And he goes to, like, 
you see the same brown guy every day, you start to get mistrusting. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's like, we see that every day. We see that happening with like, <coughs> with our peers. Yeah. And you know, yeah, and you that, don't know what they're getting radicalized on. Yeah. And you never know where, like where your message hits people. And you know what? I really, like yeah. I watched that piece and I was like, this this is this is what comedy is going through sometimes. Well, the majority, of, well, not sometimes. This is what comedy is going through right now. Like I'll be on stage Explain. and I'll say, I'll say something, right? I'll say something about like one, like for example, I had a I had a joke. Well, I still have a joke, but I had this joke I did on stage where I talked about my mom having a skin condition, right? And I said yeah. she had um, vitiligo and her her hand was turning like white at at some point. So mm. so I was like. I don't know you remember that joke? Yeah, I remember the joke. Yeah, and I was just like, yo, she got, she has white superpowers. She can put up a Whole Foods and all this <laughs> other stuff. And I just started saying some goofy stuff. And then somebody after the show came to me and was like, well, Vinaligo is not caused by stress and blah, blah, blah. Now I'm like, in my head, I'm like, bitch, I did the research. Okay? <laughs> what are you talking about? But the thing is, it hit, <laughs> it hit her differently. It hit her differently than anything else. Like so, it's like you can say a joke or say something, and it'll hit somebody different than what it is. Sometimes, or sometimes it'll hit right on yeah. the head. So it's just like with that episode with that guy, and him just seeing that constant, just in his face. It's just like he just reacted yeah. to the shit. Now she's talking about actual superhero terrorists, and. The, the dude at the freaking convenience store showed he just his eyes lit up because the light hit it and he didn't show yep. any superpowers he didn't run down the street and blow up a car it just got in that white dude's head and he just murdered this brown guy because oh you're a super terrorist right. like, what it's the same reason it's the same reason cops can kill an unarmed black man for nothing because they fear him irrational oh That's yeah what it is what do you think builds this irrational fear is this constant like barrage of misinformation even after the guy even after he killed that guy it was like a little throwaway line when they had homelander and stormfront talking and they're like oh yeah we do feel for, uh, we do feel sorry for that story clerk uh so thoughts and prayers yeah but, you know it's like it's like what do you think happened to the what do you think happened to the uh, that white dude from the beginning you know he was probably celebrated by all those people like kyle rittenhouse the dude that killed those uh, protesters, you know? Oh, yeah. It's just like, it's probably the same kind of thing. And it's like, then at the end, we see we see the pushback for all the congressional people's heads explode. But even then, it's just, oh, my God. But yeah, yeah, that, that definitely, it, it felt like Trayvon Martin. That whole yeah. situation. Because the thing is, the guy was, oh, I forgot the, the Trayvon's killer, but he was a regular dude. He wasn't even a cop. He just saw a black dude mm-hmm. and was just scared because of all the shit that he had been Zimmerman, reading. Yeah. Zimmerman, yeah, all the shit he saw online. Yeah, and then he fucking ran up on him, killed him, and then somehow he became the victim in some way. I don't know how he became the victim, but George Zimmerman became the victim yeah. in some way. But he had all that shit just piled up in his head, and he fucking killed somebody mm-hmm. out of nowhere. So that, that I just I just really commend them on really putting out like a deep message in a comic book style movie TV show. It was like, I was like, damn, this is deep. Yeah. No, it really is. And especially with like, with what's going on now and you know how they made Stormfront a Nazi and it's like the parallels between, you know, the unjust and horrible gains that Nazis were able to get through yeah. genocide and like the parallels between that and like setting up you know, a lot of our corporate, uh, like a lot of these big, big corporations, it's like, mm. yeah, of course things benefited from the Holocaust. Of course these big corporations probably benefited from the Holocaust and, and try to just change their image, but still kept the unjust enrichment. You know, that's, that's what the company, that's what that company is. By the way, so Black Noir. <laughs> he, has a, uh, he has a nut allergy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but they've been setting that up. They've been setting that up like Chekhov's gun. Like, you know? Really? You know how it was an almond joy. Right, it was an almond joy when he was behind that, like, analyst girl and, and he, he pulled up the dustbin and she was eating an almond joy for her to throw it away. 
And oh. everyone just, we just all thought it was like a funny gag. And then I think like Huey and Huey and Starlight had like a conversation about Almond Joy in an earlier episode too. And like they, they did. It and it's like, wait, why are they being Yeah, it's like why are they doing all this product placement? And then it was like, Oh, that was just like a that was that was just a, a, a little tip, just telling us that this dude is allergic to treatments. Yeah, <laughs> check off candy bar. Check off. Candy I was bar. like, really, dude? <laughs> That's the. Now, did you see the but, trailer uh, for episode eight? Uh, yeah, it was like it was like uh, like uh, like a flash of a scene or two scenes. It was very very short. The one I saw, I might have just been a small teaser. Yeah, it was the. Uh, really it was Butcher's. Uh, Lady, I don't want to. I don't know what to call her, but his lady. She shows up at the pawn. Yeah, Becca. She shows up at the pawn shop. Like, hey, they got him. First of all, how the fuck she get out? Let's let's. I know. I was like, okay, she lives. I'm like, I'm like, okay, hold up. So you had the ability to get out this bitch the whole time and tell him where you were, and you. So so it took a little boy for you to be like, I got to get out and tell Butcher. And she got out. That maximum security vod, whatever the, uh, whatever the hell she's in, community, fucking Truman yeah. Show shit she's living in. I mean, as soon as as soon as her son said I hate you, I figured that was like the green light for Stormfront or Homelander to just like take her out. And oh, that's like all they were waiting for. Yeah, I thought they were gonna murder. I thought they were gonna, gonna clip her real quick, but that I was am so tense. What every scene of this show. <laughs> I don't know if Homelander or Stormfront are gonna murder someone on screen. Yo, the fact that yeah, every time they're they're in the room, well, more, Morley Homelander. Well, Stormfront, she's built that up yeah. after, ever since she did her her racist uh, run through of murdering black and Asian people and calling them yellow bastards. But uh, Yo, ever since she did that, that I was, was like, wild. well, well, all right. <laughs> but. It's just like this white girl from Portland is so racist. Yeah, what? I was like, what? How could she? <laughs> but she, but she, I don't know what she told the kid because that that little boy was fully with his mom, and then somehow they did one flight, and no. then next thing you know, he's like, I hate you, mom. He flip flops. You he, think it's okay? So here's here's something I'm thinking, like. I don't know why they could never do that, like, super powered boy that loves their parents doing a heel turn real quick. I don't know why they could never do it right. Because I think they screwed that up also in Brightburn. Ah. Uh. I did not like that movie because it was like, where the hell did all this come from? Like, he was so loving to them. It's like, how could that switch just like that? And it's like, do you think the writers were just making fun of Brightburn? They might. <laughs> They might have. I don't know. Because I, I, I didn't read the comic. So, I mean, every time I look up a review yeah. or something like that about it, people will always refer the comics. I don't, think the, I don't think the kid is in the comics. Yeah, I don't like, think I've, so I've either. Been, I've been looking up, you know, I've been looking up some, like, spoiler comics things. Mm-hmm. And, like, even with Black Noir, uh, he's a different character than he is in the comics. So I don't know if you heard up what he is in the comics. Yeah. So, can we talk about that? Comic book spoilers? I mean... I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess so because I haven't, I haven't really tapped into the comics like that. I only like heard like certain yeah. spots, but I, I tend to stick to the TV yeah. show. But, but yeah. Damn, I only know a couple of reviews. So okay, so Black Noir, I can say who he is, right? In the comics, he is. Uh, you know this? No, I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't look. Him okay, up. so then I shouldn't say this. Okay, well, don't. Okay. But I'll say, I'll say that, I'll say that he's not black comics ah and so the guy they showed in the show was a black dude yeah and i saw that i got theories of buzzing right and then like the scarring on his face is probably from when he got blown up at the beginning of the first episode by you know one of the super, the super terrorists yeah i think it's denzel you know, washington <laughs> it's probably <laughs> no you think it's a son it could be a son a son does that would be hilarious if it was like like <laughs> Michael B. Jordan to somebody random. I'm, I'd be like, the fuck is he doing? That's so funny. No, it'd be like, it, I mean, it'd just be like how that Pedro Pascal for the Mandalorian. 
Yeah. This guy that's became this big star, and he's behind a helmet the whole fucking season. You know what? That that would you know, <laughs> they did that in another movie <laughs> with uh with Michael B. Jordan. It was like a, it was like this movie. I forgot the name of it, but it's some kid who found like a laser, like a space gun, and was like running around with it. And at the end, you find out that he was supposed to be a part of that space tribe, and they were chasing down this gun. What? They were chasing down this gun. It was like a whole other story, but what? He, you haven't heard of this movie? No, I'm gonna check it out. I know about Chronicle. No, 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 no. This is another joint. It's it's an adopted black kid, right? White family, and he. I mean, it's a story within that family. But then, as he's like kind of exploring like these these abandoned buildings, he find he he hears this like space fight going on between like these two alien groups, and then. They drop one of their guns or whatever, and he picks it up, and it somehow it just lets him use it, like he just can now. And that's and then these awesome. aliens they come back and they're looking for the gun. But as that's happening, he's still going through his own story with his uh, with his older brother, which has some problems with the law and loan sharks and shit or whatever. And so he ends up like shooting up, like shoots up half a club because they try to beat his brother up. And then at the very end. Uh, freaking Michael B. Jordan comes out the helmet and he's like, you're supposed to be one of us and blah, blah, blah. I was like, what the fuck? Michael B. Jordan? It was like at the very end of the Whoa, movie. Uh, so, so did they all are the same looking? I, I guess so. I, I don't know. I guess they're saying black people from space. I, I, whatever the message is, but <laughs> it was, it was black random. Black people from space all look the same. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we should have, we should have told y'all. Y'all shouldn't have been here in the first place. But it just... <laughs> but that was that was so random. So if so if Black Noir is like somebody like I don't know Forrest Whitaker or somebody, I'd be like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But uh, if he's like Brad Pitt, that you that would be funny <laughs> as hell. He's Brad Pitt. <laughs> what if, what if he's Robert Downey? What if he's Robert Downey Jr. doing blackface <laughs> from, <yet? laughs> from Thunder? <laughs> what the hell y'all talking about? You know I got it. Uh, uh, you got I got nut allergy. <laughs> Yo, so who do you think's doing the head explosion? You know what? I think I think it might be the I keep saying Gustav because I remember him from uh, Breaking Bad, but the guy. Oh, <laughs> Gustavo Fring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it could be him, or it may be someone else. I mean, because he's very mysterious. Like he may, because I mean, he's the head of mm-hmm. freaking Vod now, and yeah. he's also not shook of Homelander at all. Like everyone, because because no, everyone that's every time Homelander shows up, everyone has this really edge. Like I don't know what he's gonna do, but he was talking to the Homelander like, dude, get the fuck out of my face. Like if Homelander jump, like he wanted Homelander to do something because he's like, dude, I'll fuck you up seriously. <laughs> so he's not scared of him. So I and he think wasn't it's at the him. meeting, huh? He wasn't at the he was not at the hearing, and he didn't kill Homelander and Stormfront. You know what? You, you know what? It it really showed. It was telling how they were just so confused and weirded out. It was like people's heads are blowing up, and they were just like, hmm, "What is happening?" It's like, yeah. jump into action, you motherfuckers! Like, <laughs> aren't you superheroes? Well, Night pigeon, Night pigeon would have done something, you know. <laughs> Yo, you know how many people hit me up about that shit? Like every time something crazy in the news happens in New York or in other superhero movies, like y'all, Night Pigeon wouldn't let that shit happen. <laughs> That's so funny. Yo, I saw your post about Rick Moranis getting hit in the West Side, and then somebody had a comment about like Night Pigeon. Where was Night Pigeon? Yeah. I fucking died. Man. I was that like, was the funniest thing I've seen. <laughs> he said, "Where the fuck was Night Pigeon?" I was like, "Yeah, he was getting COVID tested." <laughs> I, was like, I know you said he was getting. You said he was getting COVID tested. <laughs> <laughs> the line was super long. He was out there. Oh, I was just like, oh, so yo, if they added night yeah, pictures to the boys, that'd have been hilarious. But anyway, yo. The, uh, yeah, Stormfront. They just they just they just walked around like it was weird. It was weird seeing that because I'm like, you guys are supposed to be superheroes, even though I know you guys are a shitty superheroes, but. Superman and Batman would have would have at least been like trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. They would have jumped to a corner, start mm-hmm. saving people, throwing people out I of mean, windows or something. That's what that that's what that old CIA lady was doing. Yeah, you know, she was she, she was, she was doing more. Too, she was like, than the superheroes. Yeah. 
and uh and uh okay so i saw this theory that maybe the head exploder person is probably the head of the church because he killed shockwave you know the orange speed guy oh and he was supposed to go to the hearing right and then like and he's saying it's like i've got a way for you two to get back on the seven so it's like if i can do these convenient debts for gustavo frank maybe that's the payment i have to make to get you two on the seven oh Uh, there's an opening for the deep they never filled the deep uh opening because translucent died Mm -hmm. and that's when they you know they filled his role with storm uh front but they never filled the, uh, the deep getting kicked off. So that's still an open spot. There's six, there's six of the seven right now. I mean, do we really need the deep? Let's be real. This motherfucker's in the Bro, water. I feel like the deep, <laughs> I feel like they make the deep so goofy that like they're setting him up to do some like insane shit. Because every time you get in like the comic book discussions with these uh, people, with people, it's like um, they always talk about how Aquaman is really stronger. And it's just like everyone also likes to make the joke about how Aquaman's goofy, and just like yeah. So I think with the team, I think they might have to pull some like real strong shit or like do something like something to redeem him. I guess so, man. I just I just don't see I don't see the purpose of the water superhero. It's just like every time <laughs> they they, they got to give him huh? He can find records. Yeah, you, that, that's about it. You can talk to them. I, I got some connects down in the ocean that can find the wreckage. Like, uh, <laughs> fuck, what? What did <laughs> he, he said it like it was him something. Talking, him talking to, yeah, him talking to the sea creatures and, like, uh, treating them like these are my assets. Yeah, he's like, like yeah, these, these are my people. You know, I got some connects. I got some sharks oh. down on the kelp looking for it. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why nobody takes him serious, man. Yeah, I got some dolphins checking into that situation, but we haven't found anything yet. All right. I mean, it's useful for certain things, but I mean, we got a lot of ground uh, activity that's going on. They need a seven bro, for just the bro. ocean, then. Bro, they they made him so goofy in this show that like you forget his character starts off with a rape. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he did put his dick in someone's mouth. Yeah. Starlight. Yeah, Starlight. Well, oh, yes, yeah, shit. They made Starlight's enemy. Homelander and Storefront. So that might be a way to bring the deep back to delegitimize her claims against him. I mean, they might. I mean, I, I honestly, after his whole situation with the gills talking and all, I, I was honestly like, all right, man beat it I'm, I'm tired of him I'm, I'm tired of the deep I can't stand him and his feelings get the fuck out of here man yeah. <laughs> what a what a great what a great bit though that was to have him do that whole reconciliation with his gills and like getting over how they look and his insecurities about them only for the end for Homelander to be like cover that shit up it's disgusting <laughs> yeah he did all of that work on himself <laughs> And they were like, yeah, 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 fix that shit. Fuck out. He's like, what happened, guys? He's like, it's, it's disgusting. Your girl is out. Pussy. That was one of the funniest moments of this show. This show is hilarious. I was like, damn, son, you did all that work and then nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's, I don't know, Yo, man. Like, even show- when even when the superhero even when he got superhero E, like when the shark started showing up in that one episode. And all that stuff was happening. I was like, whoa, what is happening? And then you see him in the water. I was like, oh, the deep's about to do some shit. Even when he did some shit, he still looked like a pussy. He still... I was like, like he didn't know how to do a superhero stance on the side of a sperm whale. It was like, dude, really? You let the homie get punctured by a speedboat? You couldn't have 17 uh, fucking uh, killer whales flipped the boat before they killed him like you, you could have called on Cthulhu something it's like dog I, I don't know I, it, he just he's he's just whack and I he's I don't know and then the archer dude uh, he got he got put on front street which was weird yeah you're a friend right yeah that's us um land was Landis the homie yeah he's a comic 
So I'm just like, I'm like, what yeah. the? Lasseter, 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 whatever his name is, it's Kermit Lasseter or something like that. But um, but yeah, he uh, I don't know what that was Langston about, Kermit. huh? Langston Kermit. Langston, yes, Langston Kermit, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I I don't understand what that was supposed to tell us. Is like, was it supposed to tell us like, don't trust this uh, this religion thing? But uh, I don't I know. I think so. I think so. I think it's just like the people, because I mean, it's supposed to be the Church of Scientology, really, you know, and this is like our members are essentially disposable. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's kind of what they're trying to say. And like when they're showing A Train and how he's reacting to everything, they're showing him as like being mistrustful. Yeah. Uh, so and I maybe think, they're setting him up to do. I think A Train is actually. I think A Train is our viewpoint of the religion. I I agree. Yeah, he's our pro- he's the viewer's proxy. Yeah. For because um, yeah, you, yeah, you kind of notice they kind of strip his personality this season. Like last season, A Train had so much personality, and he was like a force to be reckoned with. Right. Every time you see him in a scene, you're un- you're you feel uneasy because you don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah, because he's so fast, he can do anything, you know. So it's like, but now it's like you know he's kind of just like his hands are tied, so he doesn't have much personality, and so we just see his like facial reactions to different situations, right? Yeah, and it's like we're sympathizing more with A Train this season than we did last season. We didn't want to sympathize with him last season because you know they had him hopped up on the V and they had him like kill people and be you know all of a sudden this season it's just like you see him get screwed over in a corporate way. Mm-hmm. You want to like you sympathize with them, so I think they are. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they absolutely are just making him a proxy to the audience, which I don't know how they're going to set it up because when that kind of thing happens, when you make like a proxy for the audience, that's really that really means you're making the character disposable. So I don't know if they're going to get rid of H. Oh, yeah, they do. Out. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, after he got that weakness with the heart condition, man. I mean, yeah. when you when you can't when you when your power is to run fast and then you can't run fast for that long, it's like, all right, well, what are you here for? <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, these guys aren't even doing like superhero work at all. It's just being in movies and everything. Yeah, they're just doing a regular know, like, like press like, shit and dealing with politics of the game. Mm-hmm. Yo, by the way. That whole thing about Stormfront and Homelander introducing media to the kid and Stormfront being like, you don't watch PewDiePie? I think that was like a big thing from the writers because, you know, the, the guy PewDiePie, the most famous guy on YouTube, has like way too many Nazi connections. Oh. <laughs> and she's like, you don't watch PewDiePie? Oh, I didn't know that. This wild. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> that is, oh, wow. That is a deep cut. <laughs> Damn, yeah. that is, is a deep cut. Just, That's why I was thinking, like, what if that was a reference to Brightburn just making the kid do, like, an absolute heel turn uh, for no reason? And um, because these writers are, like, really... They've been, like, they code in a lot of these really deep Easter eggs and references like that. Oh, yeah. This, this show is very, very coded. And it's just, like... Yeah. Like I haven't watched a show like this in a while to where it's like I don't know where it's gonna go. Like the fact like when yeah. like in that hearing when they started talking and then head started blowing up, I was oh whoa, whoa whoa shit. Whoa, wait a minute. I, I was I was in here yelling. I grabbed my head. I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> I was, oh, night vision. Night vision wasn't on that list. Don't worry. I was like, Oh, oh shit. Oh god. Oh god, good thing I wasn't at the hearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking, of, speaking of the head, okay. So I saw this thing about the head exploding, right? Everyone thinks it's Cindy, the girl that escaped, right, with the with the buzz cut. Mm-mm. You know that was exploding heads in the. And and they're saying it maybe it was Cindy. Maybe she was able to do it through the broadcast because they said that the head exploding stopped after the broadcast was over. Right, like once the thing cut out for technical difficulties, there was no more head exploding. Yeah, and like. When Cindy was in her cell, she was able to look through, or it's implied that she was able to look through the surveillance camera at the people watching the security screen, security yeah. monitor. You know, like um, Huey and them. So maybe she was able to blow up the head with that. But then again, 
the way they showed her blow up the head in the hospital was like it took her time and she had to like crush her hand Mm -hmm. you know and do like a whole thing and those heads were exploding super fast yeah so I think she might be a whole red herring I, like, I don't know because more than one people because when mm-hmm. she when because remember when uh when Ma, when mm remember him him and uh that other yeah. chick they went to go visit that investigator they were talking to her and a freaking head blew up right in the middle of the conversation so it was like right who was that and then if that bald headed chick was locked up in that asylum then who the fuck did that. Right, so it's just like it's like, does she have a handler? Are they able to click it? Because that's another thing I was thinking. It's like, well, what if they are able to convince her or whatever, and like just use her as like a, as like, okay, well, we need to take you out, and we need to break these people's heads, and then we'll put you back in, and like mm-hmm. maybe they get. But like, because when she was like, when she came out and saw Lamplighter, and she was like, but you're dressed like him, you seem like friends, and so it's like. You know, I don't know if I don't know what their relationship is like, but yeah, I think she's a complete misdirect. Yeah, Maybe she's definitely um, she's a misdirect. She's something in she's like a she's something because she's out now. Yeah, she's alive and she's out. Maybe she's the maybe she's gonna be the person to take down the head exploder guy, or maybe she'll explode Stormlander's head or uh, Stormfront's head. I don't know. You know? Do you I think? Don't... What were you gonna say? I said, do you think with Stormfront, like, you think she's going to die in the, in the season finale, or do you think she's going to become a bigger threat in the next season? They can't kill her. They they built her up too fucking big. Like, they, she has this gigantic backstory of being a, a Nazi racist chick that's been around, that's been living for years. Yeah, but she could just... Then she could just get COVID after the first debate. So you never know. <laughs> she gets COVID. <laughs> she gets a lightning COVID. Uh, I don't. I mean. I, I mean. It, the thing is, if she dies, just know that Homelander is going to be a villain then, because he is in love. Yeah. So. Oh man, I cannot wait to see him get unhinged because that scene with him like having that fantasy about lasering everybody yo I thought he nuts. did that for real in the middle Same of that here. speech and he was like zzz, zzz, zzz. I was like oh shit he's done it he's gone and then he whoop, they took him out I was like oh okay I think they're, they're playing yo. with us on that they're playing with us on that edge of when is he gonna snap and I think that's his edge yeah. it's like when is Homelander gonna snap and really start I mean, and you know what in a real sense that's fucking scary because the thing is who's gonna stop this motherfucker I mean now we got this head exploding person but on on a real scale like he just showed up in that other country dude had superpowers he was like what's up man ooh I'm scared zap alright I'm out and he just left like he just <laughs> he just is strong mm-hmm. as shit so and we don't know we don't know like he's supposed to be Superman we don't know if there's like such a thing like kryptonite or something right now the only weakness that Homelander has that we know about is his ego is breast milk oh what yeah breast milk maybe breast milk (laughs) breast milk and his ego (laughs) so I don't I don't even know between that I don't know yo and maybe do you think do you think do you think Stormfront was I mean yes she was manipulating him Mm -hmm. but like when she saw the baby and said oh that looks just like my daughter do you think she knew about Homelander's kid and was just trying to find a way to get get in there? Because I mean, she is she is bought like the company, oh. the company's like her company, so it's like she would know about this compound with Homelander's kid. But like, you know, I I really yeah, like I feel like she's playing it. So because he's such an easy mark to be caught, you he's know got what? All those developmental disabilities. You know what? I didn't even think about it like that. I thought about it in the senses of since she's all in love with him that she wants to make a super no. baby with him but I think she I, you know what I could see her doing something like that her pushing that envelope to be like let's see if he'll let me see the kid and if he introduces me to the kid I can turn the kid and I can I can mold this child to being mm-hmm. the Homelander I want this kid to be Right, because Homelander right. is already Homelander's fucked already up. too old and opinionated yeah he's already too old and opinionated and so she can 
remove him out of the equation and maybe like you could turn you could turn this kid on his mom you could easily turn him on his dad yeah you know what I mean and if she and does like, that they, that's... they kept hammering yeah they kept hammering the point uh, on this episode cause you know all these shows love to use motifs and stuff but they hammered the point like with the guy in the wheelchair about how he's like yeah you know well, he was a sweet kid when he was young but then I went to work on it and then like Butcher's dad was like if I didn't go to work on you you'd, you'd be, you wouldn't be so tough oh. you know? so it's like so it's like oh of course we're gonna set up this parallel it's like this is a sweet kid he makes these goofy ass Lego uh, animated things you know and he's like he's wholesome he doesn't know media then yeah they're gonna go to work on it so it's like maybe next season we're gonna see the radicalization of this young Superman yeah yeah I mean I I thought that the kid I mean when we talked I thought that the kid was gonna be the one to take Homelander out because he was super against him but now that they flipped him real quick I don't know she I and mean, he may still be the one because Stormfront she was the one that flipped him really because Homelander didn't do that shit she nope. did that Homelander no yeah Homelander was they like Homelander was still you know insecure about it because he's like I don't want Ryan to hate me which is why I can't kill his mom you know yeah and but Stormfront already figured out a way he's like okay I'll, dude I'll she was th- in. she was there for a few minutes and then she flipped the whole script mm-hmm. like this mm-hmm. chick <laughs> god damn so yeah who would have thought who would have thought a white woman from Portland with a Skrillex haircut and a bunch of Nazi ties <laughs> would be that kind of an instigator <laughs> a Skrillex haircut <laughs> <laughs> That, that, Yo, that's, you gotta bring that back. <laughs> that's how the clippers sounded on my head. So you want to fade? Okay, yeah, just give me a fade on the sass. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And I, I saw a clip of I think I saw a clip of Queen a Maeve doing some fighting. So she's gonna be fucking some shit up oh, in, in the next episode too. Yo. Yo, so what is okay? So Maeve, look, like power scaling, right? Mm-hmm. You saw Starlight is Starlight essentially kind of indestructible. You know, you start getting hit in the face with all the shit by Black Noir. Mm-hmm. No, you know, no blood, nothing, right? <clears throat> so Black Noir is super powerful and strong. But then Maeve walks in and just puts him in a headlock, and he is just like incapacitated. You know? Yeah. So like, so like, how strong is Maeve? You know, compared to Homelander, even and all that shit, and it's like even compared to Stormfront. And sometimes I think about Stormfront, the way she acts around Homelander, and she acts like she fears for her life. But I really think that's a fake out too. I think she might be stronger than. Her. Oh, you know they're gonna. You know they're gonna make her stronger. I mean, come on. Look, look at yeah. look at what the the state of the world is right now. Women are stronger yeah. than men in everything. They 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 and they're not they're not giving men credit with strength. They're making men look like bitches. Like like for example, well one of the first movies I saw that in. Well I mean first of all I've seen that in every goddamn sitcom since whatever the fuck. Women are just the ones putting motherfuckers on couches. But uh, Hancock, <laughs> Hancock, Will Smith, yeah. strong strong ass black dude with a drinking problem. His weakness, white woman. A white woman that's stronger than him. She was fucking strong as shit. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, Charlie Theron. Yeah, yeah. They had, they fully had her. They fully had her come in and swoop in. And you know what? Charlie Theron is like literally African American. Yeah, she's from South America. I mean, South, I mean, South Africa. <laughs> yeah. She's from South Africa, so she's like. They're just like white women do it better. Yeah. What's the point of Hancock? What's the point of Hancock? She <laughs> she put her hand on his cock and broke it. Like she was. <laughs> Will, Will Smith was just like, I gotta make this superhero movie where I show that white women are more powerful. <laughs> yeah. So I I mean I don't know Queen Maid man. I think I think she's strong. I think she's stronger than what they let on because. But yeah. but the thing is they've gotten in her head so much that they just make her look weak. But there's some moments, man. Like she stood in front of that damn car and folded it real quick in uh, season one. 
yeah. You know, she. I mean, she's strong. Yeah. But it's like if you can get in someone's head and fuck with them, you can make them feel weak, even though they know they're stronger than that. Yeah. So it's it's a. So I mean, yeah. I think Stormfront is strong as shit, huh? Yeah, just like Lamplighter committing suicide, man. He was also messed up. Man, he was. Uh, I don't know. That was a bitch move, man. <laughs> they moved well, my well, statue. What an actor, no, no, great what actor. An actor though. He played. Well, uh, by the way, he that's, played that's Ice Man. Man. <laughs> so I, mean, I guess he's just a throwaway superhero character guy. They just put him in superhero uh, movies and no. kill him off real quick. He got his head snapped off in the last X Men, didn't he? Yo, he did. Yeah. That was a wild one too. Where it's like he was all frozen, and then the guy just like clipped it, clipped his head. Yeah, it was, was like, like what? what the fuck? Yeah, they were murdering X Men <laughs> left and right that that yeah. movie. I was like, I f- grew up, I grew up watching this guy play Ice Man, and he just clipped his head like in the first two minutes of that movie. Dude, they cut him so quick. I was like, God damn, <laughs> this, this franchise must be done. <laughs> he said, Fuck mm-hmm. it. So they killed him off and he was clipping everybody. I was like, God damn. And even new people they brought in, like, oh, look, it's Bishop. Oh, he's dead. Oh, shit. Boom. <laughs> so. You got him. <laughs> he just yeeted that cat. I was like, all right, well. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think Stormfront is definitely, she's, she's very smart and she's very, she's very strong. I don't think she's really letting on what yeah. else she does. I mean, Stormfront, I mean, I don't know if she's going to, pull a tornado out the air or some shit or what I mean she has oh. super she has super healing ability okay she has she, her name is Stormfront That's so I'm true. thinking she has something to do with the weather system she's super strong yeah I mean the electricity that comes out of her yeah so she's super strong she's power over weather she healing cause I mean she he beamed her into titties and she, she healed up mm-hmm. so yeah I don't know. I mean, and she doesn't age. She's been around since the the Holocaust, and she looks like she's just turned thirty. So I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know. In matter of fact, she was one of the first. I think. Didn't she say that? Wasn't she one of the first? I think she was the first. She was the first. She, so she's like the Captain America of the shit. Yo. So okay. So so she told Homelander's son. You're the first born superhero, first naturally born superhero. Yeah. Now, with these kind of shows and the writing and all, I honestly feel like the moment I saw that, I was just like, no, he's not. He must not be. There must be someone else that's way older that's the actual first born superhero. Oh, why you say that? We're find out. What if that's Black Noir? Okay, what if that's Black Noir? Because he was crying at the news that they found out that compound, they found out about compound B. That was like his big. Like they showed him in the corner, like crying and sobbing. Yeah. And like, there's some some theories that he's like uh, Gustavo Fring's son because you know people see like black skin and they're like, oh okay, well they must be related to each other. It must be his son. Um, <laughs> how does this black guy exist without being the other black guy's new kid? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, in, a, but, in a in a superhero group that's majority white, I wonder how these black characters got a hold of this shit. True. That's true also. That's very true also because it's like, that was another thing you even mentioned. It's like, you got, you're disproportionately white with people who got the powers. And then of course, the company that produces the thing is a Nazi, big, like Nazi based company. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, of course, they're just going to have enough minorities get it to have enough token representation so they can, uh, you know, I don't, like, even, oh, I don't even course. think it's that. I don't even think it's that. I think, like, this is based off of just history in general about how they always experiment yeah. on black people or experiment on black oh. slaves. And I feel like Black Noir yeah. was one of the, one of the first they experimented on, and he kind of got the power, but kind of was fucked up. So they covered his face up so he doesn't, you don't show the the constant experimentation on him, and he's fucked up. Yo. And then also notice. That A train, he has a glitch in his shit. So it's like he has a glitch in his shit. Freaking Black Noir has a freaking a, a, a nut allergy. But Starlight, she's perfectly fine. Everybody else, Yo. they were they refined the V until they got it right, and then they gave it to white people. Yo, wait, 
Okay, who else are the superheroes of color? Just I know A Train and Black Noir, but who who else? Are there any other ones? I mean, every time they show, well, I mean, the Archer, they the show Archer. the. T- I mean, but I mean, come on now, he just has good aim. I don't. Yeah, but come on. Now. I don't know <laughs> if that's a <laughs> superhero power. He just he's just Hawkeye that just practiced a lot. He's like the Serena Williams of arrow throwing. So I don't think he's <laughs> think he counts, but uh, <laughs> but every but the thing is everybody else that has a power is a either a, is a terrorist. I mean, look, I mean, Kamiko, she got powers, but I mean, uh, that's right. I mean, but she's considered yeah. a terrorist, and I, we don't know how she got hers. No, but she got hers from Homeland. They, uh, Homelander in the first season went and distributed to create terror, like, to create the image of terrorists. That oh, they could they create fight, the villains. Okay. You know? Right. And because, and of course it's gonna always be brown. It's, it's like, it's like, that's a subtle thing, but it's not so subtle if you have melanin, you could see it very clearly, but like, that they're making, you know, all the white superheroes right, and they're making anybody else with powers that's not white very questionable. Yeah, they have a you glitch know, in some leaders. sort. It's something off yeah. about them. So it's like, even when even, matter of fact, even when Homelander they got they got that video of Homelander jumping off into Africa, wherever the hell he was and he killed that black dude that shit was on video. He beamed he put a laser beam through him and then killed like two or three other black people and was like, oh well and then left. So it was like he had, a, the guy had a power out there and then he just zapped him and that also bleeds into the beginning of episode seven where that white guy just assumed that brown guy was a terrorist because seems to be brown people with powers are terrorists yeah it's when they say things like extreme betting they're gonna do extreme betting all they do is look at skin color yeah that's the only betting they'll do yeah so they i feel like they definitely did tons of experimentation on on people of color to, to get the shit right and then they gave it to white folks I mean I feel like uh, Stormfront probably ain't the first one she's just the first one they got right but who's to say they just gave her one power if she's the first she probably got telekinesis she probably got some other shit that she ain't showing mm, yeah man she probably read much maybe she's the head blower of her I, I don't know I don't know, but she was looking mad confused in that damn uh, in that meeting when he was getting their head blowed off. She was like, "The fuck is going on?" That's true. So it's not she like was looking confused, so she might not be in on it. She might not, and also, you know, if she knew where MM was in them, I mean, she would have definitely murdered them alongside that investigator when uh, MM and uh, what's name were out there look talking to her. So I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing. That's just mysterious. I don't know who this person is. I mean, they showed up earlier, and then they just kind of just like it's funny how they let us see somebody's head blow up randomly out of nowhere in an episode, and then they just stuffed it down and didn't say anything about it. And then we get to this episode, the episode before the finale, and then mad people had to blow it up. <laughs> yeah, oh. that shit was crazy. And then man. we find the end is like. For real though, you know I've what? been looking at the news. Chris Christie just got COVID. Like, oh shit! Really? These heads are blowing up. He said he's a fat motherfucker, bro. And I'm a fat motherfucker, and I'm telling you, this fat motherfucker is a fat motherfucker. He you got what I'm like <laughs> Jesus, and he got COVID. Like, I thought you were gonna say he had damn. diabetes at least. He got COVID. No, he got no. His diabetes came with his diabetes allowed the COVID to sneak in. Oh, he got shit. diabetes COVID. Oh shit, diabetes yeah, he, nineteen. He, he, he got diabetes nineteen. <laughs> God, you know what? Chris, 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 he got Coney Island COVID. <laughs> it comes with hot dogs <laughs> and seawater. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know what I? They, they, I think they're gonna kill somebody this uh, on episode eight, and it might be Kamiko. They have to. Oh fuck, that'd be so tragic because her brother. It, it get might her be her. Against Stormfront. Yeah, it might what be her. Stormfront. Huh? What if, what if they give us a win as the audience, and what if she kills Stormfront? 
Ah, I don't know. Stormfront is too important right now. They can't kill Stormfront. Yeah, but like they can't kill her. But they're setting it up, you know, like they have her staring her down and like evilly and like attempting to get back at her and like and like you know she she's finding her own. So either they make it really tragic and have Kamiko get killed while she's going through this arc of finding herself and you know mm. letting go. Or, or they have us to have that pay off and have her kill Stormfront. I mean, that would be dope. And maybe change the perception of terrorists. I mean, that would be dope. I mean, yeah. if she did that or if she attempted and like took Stormfront's eye out of some shit or like really like put some damage on her and then Stormfront kills her and then that'd be the season finale or something like that. And then the next season, like season three, uh, they Frenchie and them get some, you know, some compound V and then bring her back and she has like some extra powers or some shit I could see him doing some shit like that yo, and then Kamiko come right. back super strong yo they could always do super zombie resurrection because this show is wild I mean they could I mean they could do that man I mean I, mean, I, I could see her getting like really fucked up really bad or being killed and we being like oh, oh. no no Kamiko and then they bring her back next season with some new superhero powers and shit so I don't know, I, I don't know, but Literally, somebody's gonna die. Though. All comics are known for. Mm-hmm. Somebody's gonna all die. All comics are known for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody's gonna die. I all mean, it can't be Butcher, can't be Butcher, can't be Huey, can't be. Could be M, it could be MM. Oh, could that be Frenchie. Oh, that would be fucked up. Yeah, MM and Frenchie are, are, are expendable. Because matter of fact, could and be Starlight. Oh, you know what? You know how in like they have those movies where they have the guy, you know the guy's gonna die like in a military movie when he's like, hey man, what are you doing? Just writing a letter to my lady, man. Just wanna let her know just in case things don't go right. And then he's the first mm. motherfucker to get shot. He's like, give this to my wife. To learn to love her. Right. I think that yeah. when she was, remember when that investigator was in the car with MN was like, yo, just leave. Just get out. He's like, I can't until it's finished. He's like, it's never finished. Remember that? And he's like, I can't God until it's it. finished. MM might be the one. God damn it. <clears throat> You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. So that was that, that note. Was such unnecessary. Yeah. That dialogue was unnecessary. I was like, why would she push until him to get out like that? Necessary. Yeah. So and that could have been the, the tell to be like, yo, dude, leave. But he's like, no, nah, I got to stay in until it's over. She's like, it's never over. And she, he gets in the car all silent. I'm like, ha. Ah. MM, he might catch it. Cause they can't take away Starlight or I mean if Starlight gets it, that that would definitely You know, what if Starlight gets killed and then um who's who's the uh, Huey. What if Huey he gets some plus some compound V and he becomes super and he starts going on yo, a tear. I am waiting for it. I I'm like, yo, I want Huey like that Bill Hader. It's Bill Hader, right? No, that's not Bill. That's not Bill Hader. That's the, he just got Bill Hader head. <laughs> he, uh, he, got, he got Bill Hader head. <laughs> he, he, got, he got that <clears throat> Bill Hader face. But uh, I'm waiting for him to go all Barry on him. Yo, for, yo, for real? Like, because the thing is, they build him up as this weak dude. But he, he, I mean, he has elements of bravery within that. But if he were to get super, dude, he would be something to fuck with, man. Bro. No, I mean he's like he slips out of every situation, and he's able like he's able to like, and it's kind of weird. Like even with Lead Lighter, he cut off his hand to use for the thing, and it's just it works. You know, yeah. he's like the Joker, but opposite. You know, yeah. the Joker they they theorize that the Joker's like superhero power is just timing, like cosmic timing. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> no, timing is a big thing, man. For it real, is. Like, you just like exactly, that, that chick yeah, in uh, exactly the, Deadpool. Oh, with the luck, the luck girl. Yeah, with the with the with the light skin eye. Zazie yeah. Beats. Yeah. She just had yeah. good oh. luck, which was the weirdest superpower. But you're right. It. I mean, if I had if I had to have a simple superpower that wasn't too crazy, good luck would be one of them. Good luck would probably be the best superpower. Cause what, why would you need anything else? Yeah. I mean, like just, even that girl from the Umbrella Academy that can whisper anything into her, uh, anything into the world, like the whisperer. She whispers anything and it manifests. 
Oh, word. Or, or, or no, I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor that she has to say, I heard a rumor that, and then she'll say anything, and it becomes real. Oh shit! Or I didn't know that. She can manipulate people's minds. No, oh, sorry. I don't know if you seen that. Probably. No, I, I, I don't want to watch it. I, every time I've tried to watch it, either, really? either I've fallen asleep, or I just got bored. There's a, there's a talking oh, no. monkey. And there's kids right now. Well, I just, I was like, I, I hope you give it, I hope you give it another look and a fresh, like, a fresh look and binge it because I think you really will like it because it's kind of dope. And then the second season kind of dope. It's a bit cheesy, but you know. Yeah, I think that's what got me. I was sitting there like, yeah. come on, man. What is going to oh, oh, the monkey talks now. Oh, okay. The monkey has a British accent. Oh, word. <laughs> Okay, this kid does this. Yeah, oh, then, <laughs> word. All right, this is an old man. Oh, okay. Word. Yeah, but then you learn about it. It's like, well, maybe the reason the monkey talks is because he was, you know, <laughs> extremely experimented on. Yeah, he he's definitely the monkey. the rocket. I can I can tell he's the rocket raccoon of the situation. I I think I've seen too much superhero shit that it's gonna take it takes something else bigger for me to be into it that's like the boys the boys takes it so left right brings it into reality that yeah. i'm like yo this shit is crazy so umbrella academy is just like nickelodeon uh i don't now, know bro, I'll, I'll frosted tell you flakes this now. i'll tell you this now i'll tell you this now the umbrella academy is supposed to i feel like it's supposed to look like it's some nickelodeon nicktoon kid shit uh-huh but no, it's some wild shit, like on the superhero side. Oh, really? It's some wild, wild shit in that show. Yeah, like, like, it's some wild shit, man. When, when you had when to spoil, I, it. I like waited for season two. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I'm like, I waited for season two. And when I saw that a date came out for when season two was gonna come out, uh-huh. I looked forward to it. Wow, like that show is good. Yeah, is it up there with the boys? <laughs> Um, it's like a different, it's a different character. I mean, it's like a different side. That's a no. It's like, you know. <laughs> no, it's not up there with the boy. A few things are up there with the boy. Watchmen is up there with the boy. Yes, it is. Watchmen is vicious. Watchmen is so good. <laughs> Watchmen is fucking yeah. vicious. Did they come out with season two? They're not going to. Oh. oh. Yeah, that was a one off. Wow. On that purpose. was. That was a great one-off, man. That shit was deep. The best one-off. Damn, that was a one-off? You know what? They seem to do yeah, that with The right. Watchmen. Because they did that with the movie, and the movie was a one-off. Mm-hmm. And then they did it, and they did it in depth with the TV show, and that was a one-off. Huh. Yeah. No, because, I mean, the, the so the guy that did the TV show, Damien, Damien Lindelof or whatever, mm-hmm. he was a big fan of Alan Moore, the guy that did the comic book. Uh, and you know everyone's like a big fan of Alan Moore, or whatever. And Alan Moore's like a super uh, liberal, whatever theorist, some shit. And uh, he um, he basically you know made this superhero parody comic book story. Uh, you know, who would be like taking into account corporate interests and mm-hmm. what would be what would it would be like realistically. You know, so then so yeah, I mean, Watchmen is a lot like the boys in that, where it's like. This is what would happen if corporate interests were tied in with superhero interests. You know, there's no such thing really as good and evil. There's no such thing as, you know, uh, following a moral code. Yeah. It's just about, uh, you know, it's just about access to limited resources and collective bargaining like anything in politics is. Yeah. You know, so it's like um, the superheroes just have more power with collective bargaining because they can sway people because they're super or they can you know, get their way, but even yeah. they're constrained by the will of the people. But, um, so then Damien Lindelof was just like, he idolized, uh, uh, you know, the Watchmen. He was like a big fanboy. And so he tried to stay true to the origin stories of it, but also, like, he did flip it by mm. taking into account, like, all the race stuff that's happening, you know? Yeah, that, when they, when they take the superhero thing and they embed it in just, like, reality, it, well, let's, let me just say it like this. Well, not reality. Let's just say when they take it and then give it, they don't give it. They don't give the superhero angle of it too much energy, because some because some superhero yeah. movies beforehand, before they started doing it like this, 
It was all, oh, he can lift a bus and throw it. He's this, he's fast, he's this. They, they put so much emphasis on the powers itself rather than the person, the character living in this world. And it's like, when they put the world above the superhero powers, I think that's what, I think that's what makes it more attractive to, to the viewer and also just to me. Because, I mean, that's what the boys is. The fact that this dude mm -hmm. is kicking it with his girlfriend and then a super speed dude shatters her. <laughs> he runs through this chick by accident. It's like, oh, my God. It's like now this guy has to deal with the fact that superheroes live and they can occasionally kill somebody. And you had to deal with that. So, yeah. So it's like it's. I, I just like that angle, you know, and I, I feel like that's what makes them, I think that's what made a lot of the Marvel shit so, so good, because it was like, freaking like Infinity War, or nice, no, Civil War was the, was one of the ones that really got me, because it was like, you, oh, well, now we're going to put like, put tabs on these superheroes, because the, the collateral damage after people are getting killed after they, their wars or their fights is like, it's crazy. Yeah. And the same thing, like, uh, yeah, matter of fact, uh, well, the one of the movies that I hate the most, uh, uh, Batman versus Superman, but they still had that element of superheroes need to be held accountable for their superness. Yeah. So, wow, Batman versus Superman was such a disappointment. God damn. Uh, <laughs> well, they bonded over their mother's name. That no. shit. Oh, my. That part. That was. <laughs> <laughs> What oh. Was your name? oh shit! I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Batman. So you mean to tell me you you were driving and you saw the Superman fighting a dude, cutting buildings in half, people dying, little girls crying, your friend dies. I don't know who that guy was in that building. His dad? I don't know who it was. Guy dies in the building. All his people die. He looks up in the sky and plans vengeance on this alien Superman, whatever the fuck. He's working out. He's doing P90X. He's making spears and shit like he's like he's from Africa. And then he sees him. They get into this bullshit fight, and then he's like, "Martha," and that stops the fight. How do you know that name? How do you know my mother's name? I'm gonna tell you right now if, if I'm fucking somebody up bros? If I'm beating the shit out of somebody And they say my mom's name I'm still fucking you up It's not It's not gonna be like hey, I know I'm gonna fuck you up more Like the fuck you say my mom's name for Why would I stop and then bond with you Are you kidding me The fuck Martha I will make sure Martha doesn't die tonight You can have my word on it Nigga what <laughs> It's like, y'all was just enemies. We're the two best, we're the two best Martha buddies that ever was. <laughs> I was like, dude, are you kidding me? <laughs> Yo, I was in the theater pissed off. Like, I think I did a good five minutes of stand-up comedy from the back of the theater. I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and people started laughing. I said, word, Martha, that's the name that's going to stop. Get the fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you commented out loud? Huh? You commented out loud? People heard you? Yes, because I was that mad. Yeah, that's awesome. I was, I was, <laughs> I was, because the, the thing is, leading up to Batman vs. Superman, the fact that they put it in the I Am Legend movie, right? They put the... They had a... Did you see I Am Legend? Yeah. Do you remember that billboard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. They, oh, shit. Yo, they promoted it years in advance. Like Batman versus yo. Superman. And I was like... I, I caught that. And I was like, the fuck? I said, they doing this for real? And, dude, I was so excited to see that shit. And then they, the shit shows oh, up on the exact mind. year as... The uh, as I am legend, and the shit was whack. <laughs> it's like, dude, and, and, come on. And then who was the most powerful and who was the most prepared? Who was it? Wonder Woman with her fucking music, which she is great. I will say she's great, but her on a you know who's really, you know who really 
um, really, really prepared. Who? You know who's really, really prepared? Martha? That, um, <laughs> no, no, no. The, that superhero Amazonian black woman that Wonder Woman stole her style from. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Justice League, Justice League so white, hashtag Justice League so white. Yeah, they, they whitewashed the fuck out of that. Because she, because I, I remember seeing that black woman, man. She, matter of fact, she has a dope ass sword. The only black people, the only black people on the Justice League ever are green. You notice that? Like the Martian Manhunter and the Green Lantern, the different yeah. varieties. I mean, I think, I it's think like, green okay. is what white people relate to when they see us. And that's why I think the Hulk <laughs> was supposed to be black. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> I th- <laughs> Whenever white people see black They see green <laughs> it, it, they, I mean look, look green on a different level On different levels Let's let's break it down I mean green in the sense yeah. of Black death brings a lot of money So they push these news mm-hmm. stories And they make money off of black death The freaking Incredible Hulk mm-hmm. I think was supposed to be black Or I think they made him a black guy. I think they made Bruce Banner turn into a black guy, a big ass strong black guy. And it was like, ah, oh, we got to turn him green. We can't be that obvious. I mean, <laughs> it was definitely. I think it was definitely planned as a metaphor for being black. Hell yeah, he yeah. runs fast. Yeah. He's wearing yeah. purple pimp shorts. It's like he jumps high. He's angry. He's breaking the. Sh- <laughs> he's, he's an enemy of the state. <laughs> they try to kill him. <laughs> so. So, right, the most dangerous thing is an angry black man. Exactly. <clears throat> so, yeah. an angry green man. So, they just make us all green <laughs> in some ways. So, I, I, I mean, I'm surprised A Train is wearing blue. Like, okay, we're logging this episode. What if they change A Train's costume green? That would be the wildest shit. Yo. If they make his new costume <laughs> green, man. <laughs> this podcast better go goddamn viral. Yo, that, my theory, it better go fucking viral. God damn. Yeah, every, everything black is green. Everything, just keep giving us green shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Uh. God, episode oh, eight. Wild. So, any last thoughts on episode eight of The Boys? Um, I'm so excited to see it. I actually, like, I have this show I produce on Friday nights, and so I'm always so busy, but I tr- still, like, try to make time on Thursday at midnight or around then to watch The Boys and, like, yeah. shut out everything else. Oh, yeah. Well, um, well I actually love to give, so uh, give out, um, yeah, you shout your stuff out, man. Shout the shows you're working on and the shows that you have and everything. Okay. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so, first off, I have produced this show for uh, one of our our friends, mm-hmm. uh, our friend, Yamanika. Yamanika yeah. Sanders, she's great. Mm-hmm. Incredible woman. Um, it's a show on Friday nights, Friday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern mm-hmm. on her official YouTube channel. Oh, okay. And it's just, you know, it's live with Yamanika, so it's like, it's just like a look into her personality, you know. She does the she does the rant, she has guests on. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, the thing I love about it is it's very, it's all authentic. Uh-huh. And everything, uh, that the show and and this other show uh, brand I've been working on is called Return the Jewels. Uh, you know, returnthejewels.com mm-hmm. and you know it's just like this podcast uh, I've been pushing out about like talking about like anti-colonialism and mm-hmm. like different you know microaggressions stuff like that try to create like a guidebook for you know younger and, and older people of color that you know mm-hmm. want to navigate different situations so they can just have this whole log of people of color talking about their different experiences you know and mm-hmm. it, it feels like colonialism in that all the crown jewels for the english empire are all stolen and the whole wealth of the empire is speculated based off the wealth of the value of those jewels. Mm. And then, you know, so it's just like and know, that's, whitewashing, and that, historical sanitation. And that's what the whole, and that's the, the basis of the podcast. You guys break that down and also jump into other right. issues. 
Right, right. Like we we kind of break it down as like here here is what's happening right now in the world, and here's kind of here is how it's connected to what happened in the past mm. with the colonialism. You know, and so we just try to make those connections and try to let people, you know, talk and make those connections. And we, you know, we're still we're only like a couple episodes in. Okay, now is, now is this only this is iTunes, Spotify, or is this are you doing like an yeah. IG live it's type iTunes, situation? iTunes, Spotify, it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and Google Podcasts, all of that. Okay, um, and uh, YouTube. Oh, so, that's dope. Uh, the videos on YouTube and the audios are on there. But yeah. Oh, okay. So you're doing video and audio. Yes, sir. Nice. Um, but it's just like Zoom calls, you know. Zoom I'm calls still, and man. Throwing a little graphics and all of it. Shoot, content um, footage. Right now, in this state, everyone is is just salivating for some type of content of, of any sort. So if you can market that correctly mm-hmm. to, the, to the right people, man, it's going to get far. Hopefully, yeah. the listeners on this podcast will, uh, will jump on it and check it out. Also, you got... Um, also, you're selling T-shirts as well, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. You go to returnthejewels.com. At the bottom of the page is our like Teespring storefront, and so I made a few designs. Uh, and you know, we just yeah, we sell some merch. And some people have been liking it. You That's know? dope. There's a couple cool hoodies. That's uh, dope. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys check it out. And yeah, like we gotta have. Um, so we gotta have you on the podcast, but I want you to think of. Like, what subject you want to talk about that maybe deals with colonialism or whatever? Maybe the viewers or the listeners here mm. on this episode uh, of the movie pass can like give you suggestions. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, hit me up on my on my email. That's mhart3000 yeah. at gmail dot com. Send me some suggestions about colonialism so I can jump on the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll think of some yeah, stuff too. I'll definitely like, jump on. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Like, you, yeah, I, I want to, I want to have you on. It just what, like, what areas? They, it's like the same thing with Napoleon. I was talking to him. I was like, okay, just yeah, think of an area that you were really passionate and would like to talk about a lot. And then you know, we'll do. I'll do some back end research. And we'll mm. try to make some connections on different you know topics and stuff. Yeah, definitely, man. I think that's dope. That's and I think that's a that's a good. Uh, Honest, that's a good angle, man. Because I was actually thinking about t- trying to figure out maybe doing like another podcast, like something that's not so, like, like I'm, I'm gonna continue to do movie pass, but it's like something that's not yeah. so. I mean, like, like as soon as the boys is over, don't nobody care about the boys no more. So it's like this is very, right. uh, this is very avocado material. I call it because <laughs> it's like it's here now, and then later on it's like yeah, we don't care. That's so it's true. like with the, <clears throat> with the with the the what's evergreen. Yeah. So with the the subject matter you're hitting on, it's like, it's it's something that people are going to forever think about, and it's something that's yeah something that's going to keep people. This thinking. shit never changes. It never changes. It's some shit that people are going to be talking about, and it's something that's <laughs> some information that's valuable in some ways. <laughs> shit, don't, shit don't change until you get up and wash your ass. Yep. yep. There we go. There we go. Kendrick Always. Lamar reference. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to shout out, man? Um, no, that's about it. Follow, subscribe to Movie Pass. You know, follow Minuit on all social media. I'm sure you already do. And uh, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> no, this, me. is, this is great. <laughs> I love, I love talking about all this shit. But yeah, no, I already shouted out my thing. Uh, but yeah, like this is um, maybe I don't know. Let's talk about this other podcast idea you have when we're off of this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once we finish this episode, we'll talk about uh, that. So I'm, I'm throwing on some more what ideas. Is but um, yeah. but yeah, uh, we're definitely gonna talk about the. We're gonna do an episode on, on the finale episode on an episode eight. Yeah, we'll do that probably. Uh, what I don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't want to say like yeah, we'll do it we'll this time it and then it'll, you know whatever happens happens. Put the pressure on the situation. But anyway, but yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, it's been Love Agarwal, the big homie, aka Brooklyn Santa. Check him out hey. on IG, dope photographer, and um, and yeah. Thank you. We'll be out of here. Be out. Be out.